All right, thank you for joining me again for another exciting edition of my videos. Uh, if you have found my video useful, please subscribe and share with your friends and let them know that I'm doing this series of lectures. All right, so in this video, we're looking at the 11th topic of the JAM syllabus, which is support and movement. And we're going to be using the book Exclusive Biology as our guide. Let's go. So we shall consider supporting tissues in plant, movement in plants, supporting tissues in animals, types and functions of skeleton. So supporting tissues in plant are specialized cells and tissues that are used to provide support in plant. They include parenchyma, the colenchyma, the sclerenchyma and the xylem tissues. So we will discuss each of these tissues one after the other. Beginning with the parenchymal tissue, they consist of loosely packed, thin walled, rounded cells. Now, I will underline this. This is a key uh, distinguishing um, features of the parenchyma cells. The thin walled, rounded cells with air spaces between them. It is, I mean, it is the principal tissue of the cortex and pit. I can refer you to um, topic six of this series so that you can see the location of these tissues in the stem and in the root of the plant. Now, what's the function of the parenchyma tissue? It makes up, makes up the ground tissue of many organs and therefore provides support. Now, remember I said that the thin ward, they have thin ward rounded cells. Now, keep that at the back of your mind. Number two, it stores starch and other substances. Number three, the support plant by togo. Now, because they are thin wall, they cannot um, readily provide support until they, um, they are strong enough. That's by togo pressure. Once the, 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 the thin wall gets bigger, then they provide support. And they also conduct gases and water across plant. Number two is the sclerenchyma tissue. The walls of the sclerenchyma cells are evenly thickened with lignin. Now, it strengthens and supports the plant. Now, another keyword here is that the, the walls are evenly thickened. We shall see that in the diagrams. Number three, the colenchyma tissue. The walls of the colenchyma cells are thickened at the corners. All right? They are thickened at the corners. In other words, they are un unevenly thickened. I will show you that only at the corners. It provides support for young stems and leads to the, due to the lignins that, it, the lignins that it contains. And it provides mechanical support to the plant. Finally, the xylem tissue or wood. They are the conducting cells. So they are made up of two distinguishing, I mean, two distinct cells called vessels and tracheids. Their primary role is to conduct water and other solids. But in addition to that, they strengthen, they provide strength to the plant tissues. So I will say that, let's look at this diagram that explains the different cells. So beginning with the parenchyma tissue, the parenchyma tissues, I told you they have thin walls and they have air spaces between them and they only become strong by tug of pressure once the, the starch that is stored here allows water to move in by osmosis then they they become strong and provide support the next is the the colenchyma tissue here that you can see here you can see that they are only thickened at the corners so it's it's only unevenly thickened only at the corners you will find them thickened here and finally the sclerenchyma tissue, you can see they have the secondary cell wall that provides um, a lead, um, that is made up of lignin, lignin and that gives them that um, the strength to provide support to the plant. We are going to now talk about movement in plant. So movement in plant, plant do not move from one place to the other in the strict sense of it. 
So the movement we talk about in plant here is how plants grow or growth response in plant. So basically growth re response in plants are of three main types. You have tropism, you have nastism, and you have taxism. I'll begin with the first one. Tropisms are directional growth responses in which the direction of the response is determined by the direction of the external stimulus. Now, there are different types of tropism. You can have phototropism in which shoots are responding to the sunlight. So that is why this is called phototropism. And the shoot of plants are positively phototrophic. What that means is that they grow towards the, the direction of sunlight. You also have geotropism, that is response to gravity. The roots of plant are geotropic, are positively geotropic, meaning that root will grow in the same direction as the, direct, the force of gravity, which is acting downwards. So in that case, the roots of plant are positively geotropic because they grow towards the pool of gravity. But what do you, how do you describe the shoots of plant? They are negatively geotropic because they are growing against the, the force of gravity. We can also have chemotropism. So in this case, the source of stimulus is the stimulus is, is a chemical substance. For example, the um, in, in flowers, pollen tubes grow down to the style, right? And they are attracted by chemicals towards the ovary where fertilization can take place. And finally, another response is stigmotropism. In this case, this is a response to touch. Um, a growth response to touch in this case. So, for example, shoot of um, climbing plants, such as the ivy plant, they wind around other plants or solid structure and gain support. This is also called aptotropism. Okay? So... There are other kinds of tropic response depending on the source of stimulus. Okay, so we then talk about nastic movement or naxism, which are nastic movements are plant movements that occur due to the environmental stimulus. Unlike tropic movement, the direction of the response is not dependent upon the direction of the stimulus. So they don't grow towards the direction of the stimulus because the in, in unlike the tropism, which is a that unilateral source of stimuli. Here, it's a diffuse source of stimuli. The stimuli is coming from different direction. And there are classic examples to that. One classic example is what I'm gonna show you in, in the book. A classic example of nastic movement is the collapse of the mimosa pudica plant to touch. And it was also referred to as sleep movement. There are other examples you'll find in the book. And finally, let's talk about taxism, which is the response of the whole organism towards or away from stimulus. Tactic movement are directional and positive if the organism moves towards the stimulus and negative if they move away from the stimulus. Examples are phototaxism, chemotaxism, or thermotaxism. Take, for example, um, um, a plant such as Spirogyra, could actually move towards um, a source of food. That would be chemotaxism. And it can move away from um, increased temperature. And that would also be what? Um, that would be phototaxism or, sorry, thermotaxism. So the, the, the stimulus is what determines the kind of response you get. But in taxism, the whole organism is moving to or away from the stimulus so on this note we have come to the end of the part one of this topic let us consider questions and in part two i will look at um, skeleton and supporting tissues in animals so let us consider as many questions here as we can find so the first question here which of these tissues serves the function of support and water conduction. 
So you have parenchyma, sclerenchyma, phloem, cholenchyma, and xylem. So it says which of these serve the function of support? Two functions now support and water conduction. What would that be? Parenchyma, of course, serves other purposes apart from support, but it doesn't conduct water. It, I think it helps the movement of gases. We have sclerenchyma, no. Phloem, no. Cholenchyma, no. The right answer to this question will be D, the xylem. Now, the next question, sclerenchyma cells are lignified in order to strengthen and support the plant, option A. Transport, synthesize food, option B. Conduct water and salt, option C. Protect, uh, uh, protect the plant from injury, option D. The right answer will be A, of, uh, the strengthen and support the plant. Number three, parenchyma cell cells as, con as supporting tissues when they have, when they are dash, contain chloroplast, B, have crystal, C, become flaccid, D, become turgid. I think I, I mentioned this several times. The answer is D. The phloem parenchyma is sometimes used for A, food storage, B, support, supporting the stem, C, production of the C tubes, D, transporting water. So the answer to this question is A, food storage. And what's the reason behind that? The phloem translocates food from the leaves to other parts of the plant. So the phloem parenchyma is, um, is both a storage and packaging tissue. So the answer to that question is is option A. This other question says the plant tissue that is functionally similar to animal bone is A. Endotherma tissue, B. Sclerenchymitis tissue, C. Epidermal tissue, and D. Parenchymitis tissue. So the answer to that is B. The sclerenchymitis tissue. And um, why is that so? The sclerenchyma in plant is the functional equivalent of the bone in animals. And that, that is, the sclerenchyma and bones provide elastic support. And that, that's flexible and inflexible support. So that would make it the right equivalent. Remember the, uh, the parenchyma can only provide support when it becomes target. So that already cancels it out. And the remaining options they are not supporting tissues. So the answer becomes only option B. Um, let us move to talk about, to look at move, um, questions on movement. You can see this question being repeated again. A, the, a plant, let's look at, quickly look at this. A plant, parenchyma, a plant parenchyma cell also acts as supporting tissues when it becomes turgid. This is a repeated question in jam. Okay, so movement on movement in plant. Let's look at questions. Number one, um, the growing yam tendrils climb for support. This growth response is called what? Okay, so the answer to this question is option A. And I mentioned to you earlier that tigmotropism, which I mentioned earlier, tigmotropism is another word for um aptotropism so that's when plants grow on another plant for example yam tendrils growing on another another plant for support responding to that you know they move clockwise or anti-clockwise whichever when you provide that support and that intuition that already makes them to to grow around the support is called tigmotropism or aptotropism this question says root of plant are normally root of plant are positively geotropic. Okay, so that is not here. So root of plant are normally negatively geotropic, negatively hydrotropic, positively hydrotropic. So the right answer to this would be 
uh, positively hydrotropic they will always grow in the same direction with water they will respond they will move towards the direction of water another question here it says um let's look at this question i want to quickly skip taxism differs from tropism because in taxism the whole organism is affected all right and that answer will become option a um question 12 look at this question the movement of the whole organism to an external stimulus is termed the whole organism then that is taxism b the right answer is option b let us consider other question um let's look at two more questions the response of a plant to external stimuli in a non-directional manner is what so i also mentioned that in nastic movement the response is non-directional it is only in taxism and tropism that um, the organism respond in a directional manner to the source of stimulus and this question number 16 which of the following stimuli is likely to elicit a nasty response in an organism light intensity gravity chemical substance and touch so what do you think is the answer to that in nasty movement so nasty movement are to general diffuse source of stimuli right so in this option the right answer would be d for example the mimosa pudica plant that brings that to mind finally tropism is defined as how do you define tropism growth response from to or from a unilateral stimulus so the answer here will be E. Okay, so on that note, I want to thank you for joining me and get. I, I would like to get your feedback in the comment. Please like, please subscribe and share. And I'll see you in the part B of this video. Bye.